or I know what grandpas and grandmas are good for. Candy. Oh yeah. Please let's turn to Luke 12, 13. Have you ever tried to take candy away from a baby? You know, they, they, they say it like it's easy, you know? It's like taking candy from a baby. Uh, when all that goodness gets tasted by that little baby, you know, the goodness of sugar, I tell you what, they get a gorilla grip on that candy. You know, there's no way you're going to pry that with their little, little grip in their minds. You know, if you ever succeed in wrestling it away, and if you do, there will be sirens. <laughs> there will be sirens. You know, why do we give candy to babies in the first place? I mean, they can't brush their teeth. It's time to fess up, grandmas and grandpas. It isn't healthy. You know, last week we looked at prayer and, and, I, and I described it as a wrestling match with God. You know, not, not so much, uh, you know, trying to win God over, but at, at God being our spar, our partner. He's, he's, he's basically showing us how to live life, you know, like he's training us, like he's our master. And uh, as we encounter for things with life, you know, God gives us tips. Hey, here's, here's a move. Here's, here's a weak spot. Here's a, here's a way that you can fight this temptation and this thing that binds you. And, uh, and, I, and, and I look forward to prayer kind of like in, in this mode, a wrestling match with God, like, like, like a kid looks forward to wrestling with dad, you know? And uh, that's an awesome way to look at it. You know, and we looked at uh, Jacob's night match wrestling with God. And uh, as, as, as Jacob has gotten his hold on God, God, God just touches his hip and boom, gets out of socket. You know, I want to know that move. You know? When I can encounter my sin and my... my uh, temptations, my weaknesses. I want to just be able to touch that hip of whatever it is and to throw it out of socket. I want Jesus to teach me when I spar with him in prayer so that I can learn how to defeat the enemy and his stronghold on my life. Did any of you spar with God in prayer this past week? Did you role play? God, how do I take care of this issue in my life? So that we could be prepared to fight the giants. God wants to engage with us. Sometimes we are sleeping with the enemy and don't want to learn how to defeat them and make them flee. You know, these could be times when God is seen as an unwelcomed joy sucker as he tries to wrestle something dear but unhealthy for us from our greedy little fingers. It can look like a lot like taking candy from a baby. There's no pretty way to do it. You know, I, I think we all have a little candy in their grips today. And, and I pray that the Holy Spirit enables us to see what it is as, as it, you know, he wrestles so peacefully it out of our grips and we just let go and let God. Like taking candy from a baby. In Luke 12, starting with verse 13, someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, my brother, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbitrator between you? Then he said to them, Watch out! Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist of the abundance of his possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man produced a good crop. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no places to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. 
and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. This very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself, but is not rich toward God. Please let's turn to 1 Timothy 6.10. Do, do you ever ask God for candy? <laughs> I mean, I'm not talking about, you know, oh, God, give me that Snickers bar. But, but you know, like this, like this guy, you know, he's, he's, he's come to Jesus. Here's Jesus, you know. He's, he's a master. He's a, he's a teacher. He's, he's a rabbi. And he's got a sense of authority. And he's got this thing that's aching in his life. Something's not right. My brother is not sharing his inheritance with me. It's not fair. And I'm going to get the word out. I'm going to tell this Jesus, this rabbi, all my problems. And he's going to straighten it out for me. And so he goes to Jesus and he says, hey, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. And it's going to be all done. Whoever go to God and say, God, it's not fair. Expecting God to make things right. It's going to be fair. You know, sometimes <laughs> I'm glad God doesn't make it fair. Because he's really pretty merciful. And gracious and kind. But we look around and we, 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 we see all this candy. All these things, and 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 we 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 look at what others have, and and uh, maybe our brother, and it just isn't right. And we go to God and say, "Make it right," and then God kind of eases it out of our hands and says, "Hey, this isn't yours in the first place. Let go." You know, God, Jesus, when this guy's request came up, he, he didn't go to far as, as far as calling him a baby. You baby! But he did call, re, refer to him as a fool. You fool. This night, your life will be required of you. You know, there's several passages where God doesn't treat people fair in the Bible. And there's this particular parable that Jesus gives uh, and, and he talks about these men going out to work in the field and, and uh, this farmer, he goes out and he, he grabs people in the early morning and uh, he says, come work to, in my field. I'll give you a day's wages. And then he goes out uh, uh, later on that day. And then he goes out at noon. And then he goes on. There's only one hour left in the day. And he goes out and he finds people in the marketplace. Come work for me. And they go to work for him. And then he comes and he, and he, and he, he gets to pay in them. And then the last ones that work for him, they only work for him an hour. He pays them first. And then he goes down the list. And he pays everybody the same amount. So that the ones that came last, that worked all day through the heat of the day, that, that produced great quantities for this, this man, they get, they get to see the way this servant or this landowner pays his workers. And it's unfair. And there was an outcry. <laughs> they say, What? Are we getting paid the same amount as those guys that you've hired at the end of the day? What's wrong with you? Do we ever do that with God? I've lived my life the way you wanted to. And, and now look what's happened to me. And here's a person that has lived their life and they're doing just fine. You know, God is not fair with money or temporary things of this world. And if we have placed too much value on them, they may sprout wings and fly away. 
you know, we, we measure so much value, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to pick on money. And well, because God does, Jesus does. Money is good, bad, neutral. You know, money is not exactly like candy. It, it has a purpose, and that purpose can quickly change to become an, a forbidden love relationship. And, and if we read 1 Timothy 6.10, we, we look at uh, money being placed in the wrong mode or the wrong focus. And in verse 10, it says, For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and have pierced themselves with many griefs. But you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Hold, take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. And we'll continue. But, you know, God's not fair with money or temporary things of this world. And if we've placed too much value on them, they may sprout wings and fly away. And, and, and we, 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 we need to do that. I mean, it could be health. It could be relationships. It could be life itself. We just lost a, a, a boy, a high school kid, driving down the, the dirt road. Or riding down a dirt road. And his life is gone. And we have bad news about cancer and sicknesses and death. And it just doesn't seem fair. And then there's everything else. It's like taking candy away from a baby. It hurts. It doesn't seem right. You can't do much about it. You know, if only this, it's all gone. And the only thing we can do is cry, scream, sound an alarm. But this is not what life consists in. They can be useful for the kingdom and good discipline, but this is what not what life consists in. You know, what if the man who was complaining about the unfairness had his right life right with God? You know, and, and instead of going to Jesus says, It's not fair. Give tell my brother to give me my inheritance, he might say, you know. I've noticed my brother has goodness. He, he's a godly. He, he's generous. He's, he's loving. And, and, and he lists all these great qualities. He says, why can't I have those good qualities? Tell my brother. Or how can... And Jesus might answer. He won't say, <laughs> who made me a judge and arbitrator between me and you and your brother? He would say, you bet. This is what life consists in. You can have all you want. It, it, it's, it's, like a, it's like a fountain that never stops flowing. Life consists in the inheritance of this and it's limitless. Come and share in this eternal life-giving fountain from me. You know, this is what life consists in. But all too often, I can't see beyond my empty, you know, bowl of gold, beyond that rainbow, beyond that, that, that grip I have, or that, that lollipop that's bigger than my head, and I just want, to, I want this. And I can't see what God has for me. And, I, and he's trying to get me to loosen my grip, to replace it. You know, if I could, if I could use a metaphor, take the candy out of me and give me beets and kale and broccoli. 
<laughs> Even the metaphor is offensive to some of you. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus said that he was the bread of life. Not a lollipop of temporary instant gratification. In verse 17 of that uh, of Timothy it says command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant nor to put their hope in wealth which is so uncertain but to put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment command them to do good to be rich in good deeds and to be generous and be willing to share in this way they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of life that is truly life. Please let's turn to Luke 16, 13. You know, man has three inner needs. We, we, we talked about babies, you know. They had, they had three inner needs. They needed to be the cleaned. They needed to be fed. And they needed to be held. But, but we have the three inner needs too. Needs of love, security, and significance. And we've talked uh, quite a bit about money and greed and, and certainly a vice that's easily to fall into. But there's other candies out there. Other candies out there that, that, that seem to fill these three needs. You ever hear of eye candy? Eye candy? I'll call it the lust of the eyes. Yeah, I, I'm going to meddle a little bit today. You know what I'm saying? It'll be like taking candy from a baby. Like candy has some rather instant gratification, but lacks vitamins and minerals to sustain a healthy balance. We tend to go for the instant gratification stuff, only to suffer later. You know, why am I so empty? Uh, yesterday, uh, we had a birthday party for Jason, and, and uh, after we had the barbecue, we had ice cream cake. And uh, boy, I tell you what, almost as soon as that stuff started going in those kids' mouths, I tell you what, their energy level psh, skyrocketed. You know, whoa, this is good. Life is good. And then all of a sudden, you know, after a long day of playing hard, you see them just going. And, and a lot of times this is what we do with life. We, we, we get these wonderful instant gratification. You know, God has blessed us, okay? I'm not saying everything's bad, but, but sometimes we just, we just grab a hold of those and, and the candies in life only. And, and we go, woohoo! Yeah, this is what life's about, only to be, pew. oh man, life isn't fair. This really is bad. Jesus, tell my brother to share. We sit in our cribs with a lollipop as big as our head and say to ourselves, you have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. And personally, if this were me, I'd rather have the take, candy taken away than my life taken away. Because in verse 20, it's God said to this rich young man, or this, you fool. This night, very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you've prepared for yourself? You know, getting back to the money thing, money is like the chocolate of all candies. It comes close to being real. I mean, it, it, you can feel pretty secure. I mean, that, that, that farmer, I mean, he's, he's, ah, life is good. Significance. You know, the more that you have, you know, you, you get to feeling pretty important. I mean, look what I've done for myself. Money can't buy your love, though. But it comes close, and it, and it gives you that for a season. The security and significance. But there's other stuff too. How many, how many of you, you know, we can talk about chocolate. How many of you like caramel? 
you know? I scream. You scream. We all scream for? Ice cream. Yeah. Like taking candy from a baby. We scream for it. Why all this screaming about sharing the inheritance? Why, why all the disdain? You know, and we talk about commodity prices. I, what is a wheat to 287 a bushel? Uh, why are we anxious about stuff that we hoarded that we may never ever use? You know, I like Jesus' response to his disciples on several occasions. Are you still so dull? I got a thick head sometimes. And, uh, yeah, I still try to grip that candy. No, don't take it from me. I like it. It makes me feel good. Luke 16, 13. No servant can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. The Pharisees who loved money heard all this and were sneering at Jesus. He said to them, You are the ones who justify yourselves in the eyes of men, but God knows your hearts. What is highly valued among men is detestable in God's sight. The word money is translated from the word, the Greek word mammonous. And the Thayer definition is treasures or riches, where it is personified or and opposed to God. And if we could add another description, it would be candy for today's purposes. You cannot serve both God and candy. Are you, are you, you following me? You know what? But it's your candy. You know where 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 is 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 your stronghold that that you do not want to give up, and that gives you the pleasures in life, but it doesn't fulfill, and it's causing you to stay focused on it, and rather than. Grab a hold of God. I mean, yeah, God's on the sideline. He's involved in our lives. But he's not. Because you can't serve two masters at the same time. Either you'll be devoted to one and despise the other. Or love one and hate the other. You see, it has, doesn't have to be money to take this place. The place of God. It can even be something wholesome. Like relationships and family. And I, and I, I know that sounds kind of harsh. But sometimes we place so much into our relationships. That if something goes awry. Our life is destroyed. Because we haven't placed God there. There is only one who can meet our needs. But as long as we have the tight grip or obsession with the candy, we won't afford the opportunity for God to meet our needs through the riches that are in Christ Jesus. We don't have to be that old farmer with his new barns packed with grain to miss out. We can be that brother that's focused on his fair share of the inheritance. We can be the health nut who's aggravated by injuries or, or cancer. Or we can be the baby obsessed with candy taken from their crib. Mark Twain once defined civilization as a limitless multiplication of unnecessary necessities. A limitless multiplication of unnecessary necessities. You know, 
think, think about the panic that just might occur if our, our cell phone got lost. Maybe some of you, it's just not a big deal. You know, but I got my Bible on mine, okay? <laughs> Big! You know, if I lose myself. A limitless multiplication of unnecessary necessities. But I need the stuff. You know, the government now sees cable TV and internet access as the necessities of life now. This is what they list. You got to have it. If you don't have that, oh man, you're you're part, you're you're messed up. I mean, you almost have to provide that in order to keep your kid. Cell phones for every member of the house is soon to follow. You know, is there something in our lives that will cause severe withdrawal symptoms if we were to lose them? That's probably our candy that needs to be taken away. It could be money, health, lust, pride, retirement, relationships, popularity, or even for or the other end of the scale for those introverts out there. Um, anonymity or anonymity solitude. You know, just take me away. When we had our family reunion in Washington last month, we stayed at a lodge on a lake in the hills. And there was no internet or cell phone service. There was 30 of us, ranging from 83 to zero, a bunch of teenagers. No internet. No cell phone service. I mean, we could go 12 miles and then we could get cell phone service. It was a miracle. We survived. <laughs> and we thrived. You know, we played games. We sat around a fire, went swimming, boating, hiking. We had devotions. Uh, we, we cooked. We barbecued and ate really, really good food. We lived. Life consists in... It was not so bad to have our candy taken from us. It was really good. You know, it makes sense when we finally learn to live and not hoard. It, it makes sense... As the word is laid out and the Holy Spirit is prodding your heart, you know, or, or your spouse is nudging you. Um, <laughs> it is easy to see the addictions and unhealthy dependencies and obsessions others have. But when it comes to our issues, we may be so blind to them that we actually go to Jesus and say, Jesus, I need this. I need this. How can you not give me this? What kind of God are you? Jesus didn't become a third party to bring solution to their dispute. He knew there would be no solution as long as they were both covetous. You know, it's time to let go and let God and get God. It's time we take this knowledge and, and respond with action. It's like taking candy from a baby. We can't serve two masters, and one of them is going to have to leave, or one of them is going to leave us hanging, while the other will meet our every need and give us eternal love, significance, and security. Please let's turn to 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6. You know, there, there's something worse than a baby eating candy. Or, and that's a baby eating nothing at all. I mean, if you're going to eat, you have to serve somebody. Bob Dylan, you got to serve somebody. Let's let go of the candy and the pile and pile on that broccoli and meat, okay? Bacon, whatever. And start doing life consist of consistent 
and live. You know, the world has a list of every ever-increasing essentials that is that it lists. This is what you need to have a full life. I mean, it, it, it barrages us. The media tells us this is what it is, you know, and they, they live out these people that have everything and all these things and they're smiling and they're happy, at least for the most part on the screen. That is until God says, you fool. This very night, your life will be demanded of you. Then who will get what you've prepared for yourself? You know, God's essentials are not like that pot of gold at the end of a rainbow. He is what life consists in. And this full abundant life continues when life is demanded of us. You know, in this way, they will lay up treasures for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of that life that is truly life. On March 11th, 1856, Henry David Thoreau wrote in his journal that man is the richest whose pleasures are the cheapest. He also said, a man is rich in proportion to the number of things he can afford to let alone. Life consists in the riches that are in Christ Jesus. Not the riches that can be stored and, and give security to just when our lives or whenever that may be. But the riches that are new every morning. To be lavishly spent on those around us and for the glory of God. To be rich in Christ who never ceases to replenish the good things we lavishly and generously pour out of our clay vessels. You know, when we take love off the shelf and give it to somebody, it isn't like we've lost that love off that shelf. Now, if we withdraw from our bank account, you know, our bank account statement starts dropping, right? not what happens with the riches that are in Christ Jesus. When we give peace, when we give love, it keeps replenishing. You can't give out, out give God. When we pour this out of our clay vessels, in 2 Corinthians 4, starting with verse 6, for God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We're hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake so that his life may be revealed in our mortal body. This is what life consists in. I've tasted it. It's given me life. You know, and I, I thank God that he was able to take away the candy and replace it with life. And may we continue to find what life consists in and never lose grip when the enemy tries to take that and replace it back with death. Let's pray. Lord God, we come to you today and Lord, help us, guide us, direct our sight. Lord, we get so entangled with the things that give us meaning and purpose in this life that, that sometimes we go to you and, and we actually ask for it when you have something much better for us if we just let go. Lord, allow us to see this. Lord, allow us to, to loosen that grip of whatever candy that seems to give us that life 
that's so counterfeit. Lord, let us loosen that and give us the things, the life that's real, a life that consists in you, full of joy and glory, abundant life. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.